I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe He gave His life upon the cross. I believe He laid Him in the grave, but on the third day He raised. I believe that Jesus Christ. Savior was just a man. Yeah. Others don't believe that his blood rang down his side for me. When he hung out on a tree, on a tree, he didn't believe. But when I think about the time my life was upside down and how Jesus. Welcome to the Cyber Sanctuary of Pearl and West Church of Christ. Please follow me into prayer as we start our worship this morning. Almighty God, our sovereign Lord, as you sit in unapproachable light and look down on your creatures this morning, we ask you to consider us as we worship you and to shine your favor upon us according to our needs. On this day that is proclaimed Father's Day, we honor and worship you as our perfect, divine, and righteous Father who loves us above all. Thank you for adopting us as your sons and daughters and giving us an inheritance of glory and honor that cannot be stolen from us by the hands of men. We thank you for teaching men how to be fathers, providers, but not driven by greed, protectors yet gentle, compassionate, yet resolute, to be guides who are guided by you, to be wise yet humble, and to be priests in their homes to guide children and wives to you. We ask a special blessing upon all earthly fathers this day as we confront the challenges of leading our families safely through these uncertain and troubling times. And Lord, give peace to those who have lost their fathers either to death or the neglect of the fathers themselves. As we enter this worship, please receive this petition in the name of our elder brother, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Yes, 
Jesus, yes, salvation in the name oh, of Jesus. Sweet Jesus, salvation in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's no other name I know. Well, now when your journey is completed.
come to another portion of our service, which is the communion, where we remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We find scriptural example in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and beginning at verse number 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Verse 26 says, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Would all those that would like to participate in the communion, please stand at this time. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 24 says, And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the bread at this time. Most holy and all wise heavenly father, I want to thank you for your sacrifice and thank you for loving us before the foundation of the world and loving so much you gave up the most precious thing that you had in your son that we might be reconciled unto you because of our sin. We thank you for the opportunity to remember this, the Lord's death, and we pray that we take the bread that represents your son's broken body with a clean hands and a pure heart and forgive us of all of our sins and trespasses by word, thought, or deed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may take the bread at this time. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 25 says, After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the cup is at this time. Again, Lord, we come to you thanking you for loving us so much and loving us more than we love ourselves sometimes. We pray that we take the cup that represents your son shedding blood on the cross for our sins, because without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness and remission of sins. We pray we take this cup that represents your son shed blood with a clean hands and a pure heart. These and other blessings that's in Jesus name. Amen. Good morning, church. We want to instruct you on how you can give your tithes and offerings online. You simply go to the official Pearland West Church of Christ homepage at pearlandwestcoc.org. In the upper left at the top of the page, you will see online giving. You simply click that link. It takes you to our online giving page. Under choose a fund, click general giving. The amount you would like to contribute and the option to include a memo and the frequency of how you would like to contribute is also there. You then click no thanks and click on the contribute button. This takes you to the PayPal page where you enter an email or mobile number. You also have the option to contribute a, via a debit card or a credit card, after which you click next and your contribution is entered. You will also notice a QR code on the middle or in the right corner of the screen right now. You can use a camera of your smartphone to capture that QR code and it will take you directly to the online giving page where you can follow the exact same instructions that I just gave. Thank you, church family, and God bless. We now come to a part of our service, which is contribution. We find recorded in 2 Corinthians the ninth chapter, starting at verse six, and it reads, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Let us pray for the contribution. Kind Master, we come to you giving you all thanks, honor, glory, and praise. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to give back that 
of which you have given us a small portion. Father, we pray for the Paraland West uh, congregation that we use it in a timely and fashionable way for the upbuilding of your kingdom. This is our prayer in your son and our savior, Jesus Christ. Let us all say amen. And
Good morning. Welcome to the worship service here at the Paraland West Church of Christ. And before I get started with anything else, let me acknowledge our fathers. Happy Father's Day. This is a day for you to receive the praise, the accolades, and the encouragement for all that you do, experiencing all of the love that you are deserving of from your family and from those you love. We appreciate you being with us on this day. Before I get into anything else, I want to remind everyone, June 24th, this Wednesday night, we have a Zoom call for all of the members. We need all the members to be on the call. If you do not have the link for the call for our Wednesday night Bible class, contact Sister Adams and she'll make certain that she sends that link to you because we'd like for the entire congregation to be on that call Wednesday night, June 24th. Now going back to what I said, this is Father's Day and this is a day for fathers to be acknowledged, to have appreciation expressed to them. Well, having said that, that's exactly what's going to happen on this day. I am thrilled to introduce our speaker for this morning. And our speaker, some would say, is my son-in-law. But having been my son-in-law for 19 years, I just call him my son. We're thrilled to have Brother Dwayne Winrow, who is going to present the message on this morning, Honoring Fathers, a Father's Day message. And by presenting this Father's Day message, he's honoring me by giving me the time off on this particular Sunday. And so without any further ado, I'd like to present to some and uh, introduce to others my son, Dwayne Winrow. Good morning. I bring you greetings from the Mountain View Church of Christ down in Dallas, Texas. I'm certainly thankful for this opportunity that I've been given uh, to speak to you this special day, a day in which we recognize as Father's Day. I'm appreciative to the leadership here at this church, uh, serving ministers, and it's always a treat and a blessing to, whenever I have the opportunity uh, to speak to my Pearland West family. Knowing of the years that I sh I served there in my formative years uh, to the early beginnings with my family. And for that, I'm truly thankful. Of course, I don't have a lot of time. And so with that, I would like to direct your attention to the book of Second Kings, the second chapter, starting at verse number one. I'll be reading out of the King James Version. If you have your digital Bibles or your paper Bibles, please follow along. I'll be reading out of verse from verse 1 through verse uh, 9. And the Bible reads, And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray for thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth. I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, and he wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither. So they, the two went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, 
Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Let us bow at this time for a word of prayer. Dear, kind, loving, and merciful Father, Lord, we come to you and we just say thank you. Lord, we thank you for the many wonderful things that you've done in our lives, the many wonderful people that you've put in our lives at specific times. Lord, we know at this time that the world is going through some changes, Lord. We know ultimately that you are the one shaking the tree. You are the one who is looking for a result, and ultimately, only you know what you're, what you're going to achieve. Lord, we come to you at this time on behalf of families that are dealing with this crisis. Lord, we ask that you continue to keep them strong. We ask that you continue to keep them safe. Lord, we ask that those that are going through the, this illness at this time, the illness of racism, Lord, we ask that you cure their hearts. Lord, we ask that those that are going through the, the illness of COVID-19, Lord, we ask that you will cure their bodies. Lord, we pray at this time, Lord, that you continue to watch over your church. Guide us, Lord, and protect us. In Jesus' name I pray. Let us all say, Amen. In this account of scripture, we have two of the Bible's most well-known Hebrew prophets, sometimes even confused for each other, one being Elijah and the other being Elisha. During this passage of scripture, we, we encountered that there was at least three occasions in which Elijah took his, his protege, Elisha, with him to do his work. During the course of those travels, on two occasions, Elisha was confronted by the sons of prophets who had received a revelation from God telling them that Elijah was soon to be removed from serving as the mentor to Elisha and had confronted him with that. But during the end of this passage, one thing that jumps out to me above all else is that Elijah had made a Elisha had made a special request of Elijah. It was not a typical request uh, that a person would make of another, but one that a son normally makes of a father. When he says, give me a double portion of your spirit. This morning, I would like to talk to you about the love of a mentor, the blessing of a father. The love of a mentor, the blessing of a father. When I look at this text, several factors jump out to me. There are four that I would like for you to consider at this time. As we consider as moving forward, the four things that I'd like for you to look at as we move it through this passage is the one, we must look at the mentor. Second, the mentee. Third, the message. And last, the mantle. Robert Davis, in his series, The Quest for Authentic Manhood, outlines that there are several marks of a good mentor. I'd like to identify those 10 for you at this time, if you would allow me to. One, he says, this man clearly has what you personally need. Number two, he chooses to cultivate a relationship with you. Number three, he is willing to take a chance on you. He is respected by other men. Number four, number five, he has a network of resources and number six, he is consulted by others. Number seven, a good mentor both talks and listens. Eight, a good mentor is consistent in their lifestyle. Number nine, they are able to diagnose what you really need. And 10, they are concerned with your interest. As I was putting this lesson together, I, could, I couldn't help but to think personally of the great people that have been in and out of my life that have mentored me in some form of capacity. Those from, a, from afar who did not know that I was modeling myself after them, and then even those who I've personally had a mo an opportunity to, intimate, to, allow, to, uh, to be allowed to uh, intimately know. I think about as a young man growing up in Los Angeles, being exposed to great preachers such as Lawrence Murray, 
Kevin Murray, Fate Haygood, uh, growing up going to the California State Youth Conferences, they were a type of mentor for me at that time. And then, of course, as I became a young man, uh, coming into Texas as a young married man, being under the tutelage of a brother Emmanuel White of the Forest Hill Church of Christ during those seven years. Uh, he was a great influence to me and taught me many things. And then, of course, later in my life, as I uh, relocated, I was blessed with the opportunity to spend more time uh, with both my father and my father-in-law. My father served as a mentor in many facets, as did my father-in-law. Both of them poured into me greatly, and both of them mentored me in ways that I had never thought or envisioned ministry to, of being. And it was with that, while we see the importance of what it means to have a great mentor. And so as we look at this passage, I want us to consider Elijah, the mentor. Many of us are familiar with the prophet Elijah, who was a Tishbite, known to be uh, to serve in the northern region of, of Israel. Elijah had a special calling. We were introduced to him in 1 Kings uh, chapter 17, but I want you to realize that every prophet has a special calling. We understand that Jonah was called to speak to a lost people, the lost people of Nineveh. We understand that Amos had a special call to bring about reform, preaching to the ills and wanting to bring about social justice. But Elijah had a special task in and of itself. Elijah was called to address the syncretic behaviors that have been embraced by Israel. You see, syncretism is when one embraces the beliefs, uh, other beliefs in addition to their own. In the beginning of the, of the book, in 2 Kings chapter 1, we find that Elijah had been called to confront the, the king at the time, Ahaziah, who had fallen through a lattice or a, the sunroof of his bedroom and had severely injured himself in an effort to uh, know how this will play out. Ahaziah had sent out some men to the temple of Baal to see if he would recover from his injuries. God had spoke to the prophet Elijah and told him to in intercept those men and tell those men that the king shall not get out of his bed again, but he shall in fact die from this injury. We find here later that King Ahab had married a Canaanite girl by the name of Jezebel. Now the problem with this is that King Ahab had made room and provisions for the religious beliefs of Jezebel in as much as that he erected a temple in the name of Baal using the money taken from God's people. We deal with syncretism on a daily basis, whether we realize it or not. The media, the culture is constantly tiring, trying to get us to embrace ideas that is contrary to the word of God. Making place for beliefs contrary to the word of God is syncretism in and of itself right there. When we claim to be a Christian, but we're holding up the daily horoscope, trying to read what's in our path for today. That does not line up with the word of God. When we embrace beliefs in regards to uh, courting and dating that are outside the will of God, that's a form of syncretism. Many of us are familiar with the great showdown that took place between Elijah and the prophets at Carmel. We know of his great faith of how it had not been raining for years. And so Elijah had confronted the prophets, told them to come down and make their sacrifices and see if it would, if their God would ignite, if the God Bill would ignite their sacrifice. Well, after several tries, we all know that Elijah began chiding them and mocking them and said, maybe your God is asleep or maybe he's out on, on an errand. Maybe you need to yell a little louder. Well, we all know eventually that Elijah's God prevailed, the God, the God of Israel, and he lit the fire and he brought the rains. We see that his faith is spoken about in James 5 and 17, where he said, Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and a half. And he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crop. There are many great features in regards to Elijah that we can see that served as a great mentor. One of the dynamics of mentors and what it does for a mentee as it does four things. 
One, it provides hope to the mentee. It allows them to see that there's something beyond them, something that they can achieve um, based off the belief that that mentor has in them. Two, it gives them wisdom that they did not receive on their own. We've all heard there's lessons that we don't have to pay for if we would just only heed the advice of those who've already gone through it. And then third, it gives a bigger vision to the mentee when a mentor allows him to see the scope and the breadth of what could be. I want to ask you fathers and mentors out there at this time, do you have a vision for your son? Do you have a vision for your daughter? What about for your family? You know, the Bible teaches where there is no vision, the people perish. As, as leaders, we have to constantly challenge ourselves to have a bigger vision than our day to day, to have a bigger vision than what's in front of us. When I look through this passage, I also have to consider the mentee. The man of God who was to succeed Elijah after he performed the miracles and pronounced visionary uh, oracles. The accounts of Elijah's discipleship with Elijah starts as early as 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, starting at verse number 19. Elijah, whose name means my God saves, was also enlisted with Elijah in an after the fact legitimation of Jehu's bloody purge of the Amorite dynasty of which Ahaziah and Ahab were part of. I want you to understand that Elijah, Elisha, was committed to his mentor. But you have to understand also that Elisha was also aware that his time with his mentor was coming to an end. Can you imagine what that must have felt? How that must have felt? This must have grieved Elisha to know that his time was coming to an end. And so very much so, every trip was precious. I find it somewhat humorous and ironic because every time that Elijah gave Elisha a, the instruction to stay, Elisha would respond, as the Lord liveth and as my soul liveth, I will not leave. Well, if you know anything about Elijah, you know that is a saying that he would make all the time. One of the things I can't help but notice that the men that have poured into me, I kind of pick up some of their mannerisms and in in some of the things I may say, some of the things that I may do, and even some of the things I may eat. Why? Because they had such an effect on me. And that's exactly what we see here in Elisha picking up some of the sound bites of Elijah. I want you to understand because he took the time and valued it as being so precious, he went down to Bethel, the town known as the house of the house of God. Some say it represents a place of worship. This is where Jacob and the where Jacob saw the angels ascending and descending up and down the ladder that we find in Genesis 28. It is also in this town that Elijah, Elijah took Elisha to deal with some of the syncretism, uh, syncretic behavior that was taking place because a temple had been erected in the town of Bethel. But he also went down to Jericho, which represents to some a place to serve. As I said, Jesus uh, described Jericho in, in, the, in the Good Samaritan as a very dangerous place, uh, excuse me, the road to Jericho as a very dangerous plus a bloody path, if you will. It was known to be a treacherous trail, but we also understand that it was visited by our Lord on his way to Jerusalem. It was there that he encountered on two occasions men where he restored their sight. It is also the place where he had brought salvation to Zacchaeus' house. But we also find that Elisha went with Elijah down to the Jordan. It was there that Elijah took his mantle, rolled it, and struck the waters and parted it, much like Moses parted the sea to allow the children of Israel to pass over. Some may say that the Jordan represents a place of empowerment. It is at this place where Elisha eventually tells Naaman to dip in the water seven times to cure himself of the leprosy that he had. It is here where John baptizes Jesus. I find it no coincidence that in order for a man to receive cleansing from a disease 
the disease of leprosy, which which was known as a as a disease as a, which is kind of correlated as a as a sin type disease, as its ability to cause the body to be desensitized to pain, such as the way as sin causes a man to be desensitized to unrighteousness, that Jesus chose to be baptized there by John the Baptist. And then last, I want us to look at the message. On two occasions, we understand that Elisha was confronted by the sons of prophets. Now, the sons of prophets were not necessarily always uh, men who prophesied, but uh, a lot of times they were recognized as people who just merely worshipped. And so they were given the name uh, the sons of prophets. Um, but additionally, there were also other prophets um, that, that were not that are not necessarily named in the Bible who did prophesy. We have uh, the Assyrians had their prophets who were false prophets. And we even find that there were even prophets among the people who did not necessarily get it right. You don't believe me, go read Jeremiah of all the prophets that, that told them that their exile was coming to an end. But on here on two occasions, we find that the sons of prophets had confronted Elisha, telling him, Knowest thou that your master shall be taken from your head today? But Elisha's response was, yeah, I know. Hold your peace. The reality that our loved ones will one day be taken away from us is something that we must embrace. We must use this as a motivator, not to squander the time that we have with them, but to embrace every moment. Elisha saw Elijah as a father figure, and he made such the request, and as such, he made the request of a son. In this last part of the lesson, I want us to focus on three things. There are three things that we're going to notice here. One, we're going to notice the request of a son, which is followed by the response of a father. At the end, we'll see the resolution of a relationship. First, in identifying the request of the son, the passage says in verse number nine, uh, down towards the latter part of the verse, it says, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. You have to understand that the request that Elisha was making of Elijah was not your typical request that one would make uh, one person to another. But it was that it was the request of a son that is typically made towards a father. We understand that the request he actually made was that of a double portion. Now, in those times, the double portion was typically reserved for the firstborn. We find in Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, starting at verse number 17, it says, but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn, which we call the protocols, by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for it is the beginning of his strength, and the right of the firstborn is his. Meaning that as the firstborn, uh, they have the right to receive a double portion of the father's wealth. We find an example of that given uh, in Luke 15, when Jesus began speaking of the prodigal son. That was part of the problem with what the second son had requested. He was not... He was not the firstborn and for him to make such a request actually robbed his 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 brother of of his birthright because he sold it at a, at a cheaper price which meant it was a selfish request on his behalf as well it was wishing his own father dead at the time but i digress the point being made is that elijah had made a request uh that a, that a son would make it to a father but i want you to notice the response that is given to elijah we look at verse number 10 and he says, we see the response of a loving father. It says, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. Elijah realized the request that Elisha had made was not something that he himself could give. He could only lead him to it. And just as, and just as Elijah, Elijah led Elisha to that goal, we as fathers and mentors have a responsibility to lead our, our little ones to that gift. You see, the gift that Elisha was requesting was something that could only be given from God above. He was requesting this power, a double portion of Elisha's power. And just as Elijah, just as Elisha had a request to be bestowed upon him that could only come from God Almighty, there is something that we can pass on to our children that we can, we ourselves cannot give. Now, Elijah passed on the power of faith, but he led his protege, Elisha, 
to receive the power from God. The power that we, that we can lead our young ones to receive is the power of faith. A very mighty tool in the tool, be in, in the tool belt of a believer. But it's not something I myself can give my son. I cannot give Cameron faith. I cannot give Haley faith. But what I can do is I can order my steps in such a way that I lead them down the path to receiving faith. As fathers and mentors, we have a responsibility to lead those that follow us in a righteous path. Hopefully that righteous path will lead them to faith, which brings me to the last point here in the resolution of the relationship. You notice here, the prophet's cloak was actually called a mantle. This is which we get the, the saying, uh, most, you, you'll hear people say, uh, one must take up the mantle, I took up the mantle of my father. Well, that, idi that idiom actually comes from uh, the biblical text that's found here. Many people that use that don't actually realize that, but it's actually this passage here that gives us an example of taking up the cloak or taking up the mantle. The mantle was merely a cloak or, or cape-like uh, fabric uh, that was used uh, by people at that time. It didn't have sleeves. It was almost like a, a tunic. But what it symbolized at that time, it represented as a visible sign uh, to, to those who saw the wear as a, an, a visual to see God's anointing on that person. And what we find is as Elijah ascended up into heaven and left the cloak on the ground, that Elijah picked it up as he was crying for his father. He said, my father, my father. He picked up the cloak and he put it on, thereby, thereby resolving the relationship, no more being the, men, the protege, but being the prophet. As you leave here today, I want us to consider the relationships that we share with each other, the, the weight of the responsibility that we have as fathers and as mentors. I want our young mentees to understand that when it comes looking for a mentor, you have to find someone that's willing to take a chance on you. I've had many great men in my life that have taken a chance on me. And for that, I am truly appreciative. I'm very appreciative to my spiritual father who saw something in me that was worth saving. He sees the same in each one of you here today which is the very reason that he gave his son. The Bible says that he commended his love and while yet we were sinners, Christ died. But also our father is, is rich in heavenly blessings. He has a wealth of resources, which is all the more reason why we should be pursuing a relationship with him. As you look at your relationship with your children or your mentor, your mentees, I want you to consider the responsibility that you have on your shoulders. I thank you for taking the time to listen to me. God bless. Father, our formal worship this morning is complete, but our worshipful lives continue each minute of each day. We thank you for the sustenance we receive this morning through your word that nourishes us and gives us strength to be different in a world that seeks our conformity to unrighteous beliefs and behaviors. Speak through us each day, Lord, and give us courage to stand for truth. We love and adore you, and we close this prayer by honoring the authority of Jesus Christ, in whom it is offered to you, Lord. Amen.